actually one of them reverses and tells the exact opposite. <laughs> That's, we're going to turn into Genesis chapter 15 to start out. Genesis chapter 15. Uh, I'm telling Adam I watched some of the conference tonight over yesterday. I had the camera fixed on the pulpit, so I only heard my Larry. I didn't see him. <laughs> I apologize for that afterwards. All right. So Genesis chapter 15. I'm going to read the first six verses so we can kind of get the uh, context here. But verse 6 in particular is what I'd like to focus on today. Verse 1 says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. Amen. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars that thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted, speaking of the Lord, counted to him Abraham for righteousness. Amen. So there's quite a bit here. Abraham, or Abraham had his idea of what, how it should go. He said, well, Eliezer going to be my heir. Mm -hmm. No, God said, no, I've got a different plan. Right. God often says, has a different plan than what we think or what we want. Right. And then we brought him out in verse 5 and he said, to look at the stars and number them, so shall I see be. I don't know if scientists, scientists still haven't been able to number all the stars. There's it's a, a countless many. Verse 6 is what I really like to look at. And he says, says that Abraham believed the Lord and he counted to him for righteousness. Amen. <coughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we begin. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you bless us with, Lord. For that mercy that we each day. For this time we have to preach that word, Lord, I pray you bless now and pray the message would be edifying to the saints that would lift up the name of Christ and be glorifying to thee. We thank you for your goodness and faithfulness towards us. We pray you help us to be busy about the work you've called us to do, Lord, here at this church. pray you bless our upcoming meetings, Lord. I pray that you would help us be faithful to you no matter who or what may come up against us, Lord. We thank you for that. Blessings you bestow upon us every day, Lord, especially for Christ and his sacrifice. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. So a lot of people like to think about they're saved by their good works, quote unquote. Mm. But going all the way back to Abraham, we see the same pattern that he believed the Lord and it was counted to him for righteousness. Amen. Abraham was saved by faith. That's it. Yeah. We'll turn over here to Romans in a moment. You know, this, this particular verse, verse 6, is quoted in reference in three other places in the New Testament. James chapter 2, verse 23, Galatians 3, 6, and Romans 4, 3. All of those that <coughs> the Apostle Paul and his two writings used to, to prove his point that salvation is by faith. Let's go go ahead and go over to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, beginning in the first verse. Paul writes, What shall we say then that Abraham our father has pertained to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath wherefore to glory, but not before God. Right. Yeah, that's the problem with the works-based salvation, that you have room to glory or to boast. Mm -hmm. you know, what is being <laughs> saved or safer? by grace are you saved through faith? And how Amen. Is the gift of God out of works lest any man should boast? Uh, God knows. Well, 
better than us that man will boast if he had something to do with it. Right. If he could be quote unquote good enough, he would say, look at me and look what I have done. You know, Abraham was a pretty good person, I guess you could say, in some ways, but he messed up quite a few times too, didn't he? That's it. I mean, he didn't he doubted God several times. Yet ultimately he believed him. He was at the very least dishonest about who Sarah was. Right. He brought Lot along with him when he wasn't supposed to. Right. I'm sure there's other examples we can find. But he says that Abraham, if he had just been justified by the works, he would have a word before glory, but not before God. Really, none of us have nothing to glory before God, do we? That's it. Amen. Salvation is of grace from the beginning. <laughs> yep. Amen. So we'll get to it here a little more. Let's go on to verse 3. For what saith the scripture, that Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. See, there's that Genesis 15, verse 6. Mm-hmm. Now to him that worketh is a roar not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Verse 5, but to him that worketh not, but leaveth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. In those verse 4, if we are work, if you're working for your salvation, your reward, he says, it's not a grace, but it's debt. Mm-hmm. The problem with the works based salvation is you can never work your way out of debt. That's it. Amen. Spiritually speaking, we owe a debt far greater than we can ever pay. Amen. But he says, but to him that work it not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. The faith in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is what is how we obtain righteousness before God. The Romans 11 verse 6 tells us that if, if it's of grace, it can't be of works anymore. If it's of works, it can't be of grace. That's it. You can't have it both ways. And really, they don't go together anyway. That's it. Grace, by biblical definition, is not only unmerited favor, but it's also favor when we deserve the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. Amen. Though today we have many people who say, you got to work your way to salvation. you got to be do all these good works. And they have their place, but yet they're not for salvation. That's it. Right. Or you have some people who say, yeah, it's a grace, but you still got to do this. Mm. You can't do it that way either. That's it. It's got to be completely of God or completely of man. You can't have it both ways. Notice verse 6 here. It says, Even as David also described the blessedness of the man whom God imputes righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. This is referencing back to Psalm 32, verses 1 and 2. We don't have to turn there, but he quotes them almost word for word there. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. The good works don't forgive iniquities and they don't cover sin, do they? Amen. It says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin or who will not, <laughs> you know, not count it to his account. That's it. You know, there's a song. Uh, I like to listen to it sometimes it's called the old account was settled long ago. Yep. You know, in the person of Christ, if you've been born again, that account was settled a long time ago. Yeah. He's not going to impute that sin to you anymore. He's not going to put it to your account anymore. In fact, we won't get to that, but there's more in the book of Romans here that tells us that God imputes his righteousness to those that have been born again. Amen. No, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. He goes on to say in verse 9, Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? Or was it just for the Jews, or for the Jews and the Gentiles? He says, For we are, for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or, or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. <laughs> when Abraham believed God and was kind of for righteousness, this was before the sign of circumcision had come. That's it. Amen. But we can't count that. And modern day equivalent is baptism, as Brother Junior brought out this morning. But faith has to become before baptism can come. That's it. Faith Amen. 
Let's proceed. Good words. Verse 11 says, And he received the sign of circumcision, the seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, <clears throat> that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision is those who are not of the circumcision only, but also <coughs> walk in the steps of the, that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. Abraham is often called, as it says here, the father of all of the believers. Mm. And really, from Abraham to now, the way of salvation has not changed. It's still by faith. Amen. The law had its place, but it was not for salvation. As we'll see over in a minute, in fact, it showed us how unworthy we were of salvation. Amen. Amen. But simple faith in the person of Christ is what brings salvation. You know, John 8, verse 56, Christ says, Abraham saw my day and was glad. Amen. Abraham looked forward to the cross. Now, I, I know quite the Old Testament saints didn't know exactly how it was going to go, but they, know a, they knew a Savior was coming. Mm -hmm. Just the same we look back to the person of Christ and his sacrifice on the cross and his death, burial, and resurrection. Well, there's a surprise to me that you say Christ was an imaginary person. Mm. They don't even accept the historical Christ. Mm. It, it is a sure thing that there was a man named Christ and that he died on the cross. No faith in what he died for, that's what makes a difference. Faith that he was buried and rose again the third day. Amen. That's how one is to be saved before in Romans chapter 10. Well, let's go real quick to Philippians before we turn back to Romans 3. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3. I could almost quote this for you, but verse number 8 and 9. Paul had just finished saying how he had a lot that he could boast about in the flesh. As a Pharisee, he was one of the best there was. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews, he <clears throat> called himself in verse 5. But notice verse 8, he says, Yea, Dallas, and I count all things with loss for the ex excellency, me, excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. Notice this part, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the Amen. righteousness which is of God by faith. <clears throat> This is the same faith that Abraham had. That's it. Faith in God. Faith in what we would call now faith in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the only way to be righteous before God, not any works that we do. You know, part of that leaven of the Pharisees that Lord Jesus spoke about was their self righteousness. Mm -hmm. They taught that you had to work your way up to be something. That's why. I believe Paul is describing in these previous verses here how he had a lot to boast about. In fact, he's saying, <clears throat> verse 6, he says, concerning the zeal persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. So, he was a Hebrew, he was a Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew of Hebrews, the touching the law of Pharisee. Notice what he says in verse 4, though I might have also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more. Mm -hmm. In the flesh, Paul had a lot to boast about, didn't he? Right. The Jew, he was the cream of the crop, if you will. Right. But all that mattered not, because he had no faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be a good person, you can be an outstanding citizen, you can be a morally well-rounded individual, but yet without faith it doesn't matter at all. That's it. There's a lot of quote-unquote good people in hell today, I'd say. Mm -hmm. so let's go back to Romans chapter 3 for a moment. <clears throat> it didn't matter who his family was either. He, notice he said he was of the stock of the tribe of Benjamin, mm -hmm. the Hebrew of Hebrews. You know, my mom 
and me a little bit have been studying some family history and we found everything from kings and lords down to soldiers and slaves and everything in between. Right. From Quakers and Puritans, one who was hung for his Puritan beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yet all that mattered not. I didn't have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Amen. So, here Romans 3, uh, we don't have to read verses 10 through 18, but they describe the depravity of man. You know, there's none righteous, no, not one. He starts out. He ends with, there is no fear of God before their eyes. It sounds very much like modern society. Today. That's it. Amen. But notice verse 20. He says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. The law cannot justify anybody in the flesh. Amen. Because really it proved to us that we were imperfect. It proved to us that we could not keep it in and of itself. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. If anything, the law, I think Brother Adam has said, taught us how to be a better sinner. Mm -hmm. it, right. Yeah. It showed us how that we could not be righteous in ourselves. You know, the law demands perfect, perfect obedience, and yet only one has ever done that, and that's the person of Christ. Verse 21 says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, and all upon all that them that believe, for there is no difference. The righteousness of the law without the law, without the law is manifest, he says. That's in the person of Christ. It was manifest in him and to us through faith. He says, upon all that believe, for there is no difference. Amen. Well, I mentioned Wednesday about the common salvation that Jews wrote about. But it's not just for one class of people. It wasn't just for the Jews or just for the Gentiles. It wasn't just for the whites or just for the blacks or the Asians or Hispanics. No. The salvation which is of God is through all that believe. Amen. Now, I know there's not very many Jews believing today. Yep, he will have his time with them again, I believe. That's it. I think we all know verse 23 here. For all ascend and come short of the glory of God. And that doesn't leave out any of them. Well, there's none that have lived a perfect life aside from Christ. There's none that have went 20 years without sinning either. Right. There's none that have went, I'd say, more than a few hours probably. You're right. Definitely not a whole day. Mm -hmm. And continually we must cry out for forgiveness. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one to another, is what James told That's it. When John says that we're, if we confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us of our sins. And how we ought to, most importantly, confess before God, but even if I confess one towards another, we pray one for another. Mm -hmm. That's not something we practice much today. You're right. Let's go on. Verse 24 here, he says, For being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. He says, God sent Christ to be propitiation for our sins. Amen. The eternally satisfying sacrifice for our sins. <laughs> Alright, he says here for the remission of sins that are past. And when something's remitted, that means it's gone away. It's gone back. It's, when cancer goes into remission, it's not spreading anymore. Too bad. Just the same when Christ saves your soul, you're not going to continue to live in wickedness. Now, I know we'll continue with this flesh until it passes on, but. How shall we that are dead to sin and live any longer therein? Romans 6 says. That's it. Verse 25, or excuse me, 26 says, To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Verse 27, Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works, nay, but by the law of faith? You notice verse 26 says that God is both just and justifier of them which believe. Amen. So that leaves no room for man to boast, is there? That's it. No room to look at me and look what I have done. 
That's the problem with work salvation. That's the problem with repeat this prayer after me salvation or it's a, or decisional regeneration, baptismal regeneration, all those things that man would come up with. It's a, look at me and look what I did. Amen. Rather, it's look at God and look what he has done for me. Amen. Where his boasting is excluded. You know, it's completely wiped out when you have true salvation by grace. When you set works aside and don't count them for anything but done, you say it's salvation is completely of the Lord. That doesn't leave any room for boasting then. Amen. You know, that was the problem the Pharisees had. They kept the law and they said that they were all right before God because they were blameless according to the law. That's it. They had room to boast. But yet, when it comes to <coughs> salvation through Christ, there's no room to boast. Right. Good. Verse 28, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That's the only conclusion you can come to, isn't it? Yep. That justification comes by faith, not by the deeds of the law. The justification or the removal, if you will, of innocent, the removal of sin, the uh, I guess pronunciation of innocence before God is by faith and not by good works. Verse 29 says, Is he not the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Amen. He's not just the God of one people. Certainly he's our God as New Testament believers, but he's God of the whole world, isn't he? Amen. Whether they accept it or not. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Circumcision referring to the Jews, and uncircumcision referring to the Gentiles. Amen. They were justified by faith by looking forward to what the becoming Messiah, just as we look back to him and his death on the cross. Yeah. You know, the law had its place, like I said. Yeah. Certainly, I don't think they could say, oh, yeah, I believe Messiah's coming and just live all sorts of wickedly. Right. Just like I don't think anyone who's truly been born again today can live all sorts of wickedly and be happy in it very long. You're right. Amen. Let's go over to Galatians chapter 3. <coughs> if you're familiar with the book of Galatians, they could follow them. From grace, it says in one spot, that they had left teaching the grace and were trying to keep the law again. You know, Paul was kind of shocked that right. they had so easily left the gospel of Christ. I just want to we'll just start reading and make some notes on the high points here through chapter 3. It says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been that only set forth, crucified among you. This only which would I learn of you, received by the Spirit, or received you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Hmm. Did you receive the Spirit by your works or by faith? The obvious answer is it wasn't by works, was it? That's it. So are you so foolish? Maybe we would uh, say that's not very nice language today. <laughs> Paul wasn't afraid to call things out for what they were. You know, are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? See so here, so it has to be a grace or a works. It can't be both. That's it. Amen. You can't Amen. begin in grace and then say, oh, i got to do works to keep it. And I do believe you will do good works if you've truly been born again, but it's Christ which preserves you. It's God and His Grace that preserves the child of God. Amen. That He saves you and leaves you out there. That hopefully you'll make it when you enter the pearly gates, as they say. That's it. For some reason there's this false teaching or false thought that you know, you're going to die and you're going to go up to heaven through the pearly gates or two of them at least, and Peter's going to be there. Hmm. I don't know where they get that theory from. 
He's going to tell you if you made it. Not no. If you've been born again, you can be. You can rest assured that God will bring you through. Amen. Amen. If you're trusting in anything else, you can be sure you'll open your eyes in hell just like the rich man. You're right. Amen. Verse 4, have you suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? He therefore that ministered to you is the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Okay. Every miracle you see in the Word of God, it wasn't by them doing something to earn it, was Faith preceded all of those things. Amen. If we saw that studying through the book of Mark and Adam's class, it's evident if you read any of the miracles in the Word of God, and salvation is no short of a miracle. That's it. Those first six here's going back to Genesis again. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. Now some take that verse to say to mean literally that we're the children of Abraham. You know, I've only studied my family history back a few hundred years, but I don't find any links yet to the Jewish people. Perhaps they're there, but we're children of Abraham by adoption, if you will. Amen. You know, Paul talks about being a Jew inwardly. There's a lot that are Jews outwardly, but aren't inwardly. Amen. There's a lot that are of Israel that aren't really of the spirit of Israel. In verse 8, he says, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, Preached before the gospel on Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. God knew that long before that he would preach to the Gentiles. Amen. He would bring salvation to the Gentiles. It wasn't some afterthought when the Jews rejected Christ. No. For he says, he preached the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And ye shall all nations be blessed. That goes back to Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 and through 18. He again gave the really the same promise that he did that we saw in Genesis 15. But he added that, and these shall all nations be blessed. Yeah. Without we'll read on so I don't get ahead of myself here, but he says, For as many as are in the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written. Cursed is everyone that continued not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do. See, there again is the problem with the law. You had to keep it perfectly. Cursed yeah. is everyone that continued not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Only Christ did that. Only Christ fulfilled that. Amen. And yet there are some today that want to put on again that yoke of bondage which Neither ye nor your fathers can bear, Peter said. That's it. Amen. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. That goes back to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4. The just shall live by faith. It's quoted again in Romans 117 and Hebrews 10 38. That the just shall live by faith. Not that they shall live by the works of the law, not that they shall live by good deeds or good works, but simply by faith is how we are to live that are born again. Verse 12 says, And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Curse, or Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made curse for us, for it is written, Curse is every one that hangeth on a tree. Mm -hmm. Christ redeemed us from the law. From that Yoke of bondage which we couldn't bear. And especially as Gentiles, we wouldn't have been able to bear it. That the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man doesn't know if they're at here there too, excuse me. Those verse 16, this is what I want to get to a minute ago. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not in the seed as of many, but as of one, and of thy seed, which is Christ. Amen. You know, the problem with 
some get off on is they think the promise was made to the children of Abraham. And in a sense, they were through Abraham. They said the promise was made to the, his seed, and the seed was Christ. Amen. Christ is through all the promises come through. It's through Christ that we receive grace. It was Christ we receive faith. It's through Christ we receive all the heavenly blessings. It doesn't matter if Abraham's in your land or not. Right. It didn't matter with Rahab, did it? <laughs> as far as I can tell, she was a Gentile fully and through. That's it. You have to say she had faith. Going all the way back to Noah, it was by grace, wasn't it? Amen. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's it. You know, in Hebrews 11, it tells us, by faith he prepared an ark. <laughs> Going all the way back to Abel, it says, by faith to he sacrificed a more excellent sacrifice. It's always been by faith in God. And it's really always been through the person of Christ. Maybe they certainly didn't use the title Christ since they were Jews, they would have called him Messiah. Mm -hmm. as the Samaritan woman did. But we're looking forward to the coming Messiah it was their version of the gospel, if you will. Mm -hmm. Just looking back to it. So certainly salvation hadn't been completed until Christ came. Until he literally died for sin. You know, that's why they went to Abraham's bosom. That's why he went there and, and preached and delivered them up to the heaven. Really, they were no more danger of going to hell than we are today. That's it. Not they were stuck stuck in limbo somewhere, purgatory, as the Catholics call it. Hmm. I'd say the Old Testament saints were just as sure of salvation as we are today. Going on, verse seventeen, it says, "In this, I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ." The law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Well, there was a time span between Abraham and the law. Mm -hmm. If I'm understanding this right, 430 years. Right. We said the law couldn't make those promises of none effect. No. Nope. We got a change and said, well, now you got to keep the law for the promises. None would have been heirs to the promise, would there? If you got to keep the law for salvation or for any goodness from God, there have been no goodness at all in Israel. That's it. Amen. But no, the law could not make the promise none effect, he says. For if the inheritance be the law, there's no more of a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Therefore, then serveth the law. It was added because of transgression, so the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Because the law was added because of transgression. Because man needed to see his sinfulness, didn't he? That's it. You know, going, skip down a few verses here. Verse 22 says, For the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. There was no verse 23, but faith, before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith which should be afterwards revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. The law pointed to the need for a Savior. That's it. The law pointed that we could not keep it, that we could not be, we could not fit the requirements of righteousness before God and ourselves. Yet there's so many today that think they're going to do enough good works to be righteous before God. Mm -hmm. You know, I often use the the analogy of a scale, people say their good works a lot way their bad works, they hope when they get to heaven. Hmm. The problem is, you know, if all your good works are over here and all your bad works are over here, there's really no good works because they're all tainted by sin, aren't they? That's it. The scale is always going to go to the bad works side. Mm -hmm. For all your righteousness, there is filthy rags, I they have said. <laughs> but even if you wanted to count your tainted works as good works, they could still not outweigh your sin. How many sins did Adam Eve commit before they were cast out of the garden? That's it. One. There's really just one sin that has caused so many things that happen in this world. Mm -hmm. 
when death came upon all men just because Adam had sinned once. There was no room for error in the righteousness of God. Mm. Amen. That was verse 25, real quick. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We're no longer under that law. We're rather we're under grace now. Amen. That's very plain in the book of Romans as well. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. If you've been born again, you can be sure you're a child of God. Not because of the church you belong to, not because of who your family is, not because of something you did, but as he says here, by faith. Notice verse 28, he says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. And God doesn't look down and say, Well, he's a Jew, I can't save him. Or he's a Gentile, I can't save him. Right. He's black, he's white, he's male, female, whatever it is. God is no respecter of persons. Amen. Well, but if we be Christ, he says, we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If we are Christ, we can be sure we're heirs to eternal life first and foremost, and all that comes with it. No. The problem has been the same since Adam. Mm -hmm. That we're all dead in sin, aren't we? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 tells us that. So there really is not a way possible that salvation could have come by works. In fact, I think I think I skipped over. Verse 21 says, Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid. Amen. There had been a law given which could have given life, really righteousness should have been by the law. There was not a law that could give life. But that's what all the Old Testament saints needed, just as we need, is life, spiritual life. Yeah. Like I said, in Adam we all died. In Adam we all fell, if you will. And it's only in Christ that we can be made alive again. When John, or excuse me, when, in John chapter three, when Christ was speaking to me, speaking to Nicodemus about being born again, and he he said, "Art thou the master of Israel? Knowest not these things?" Right. Nicodemus should have known what being born again was. Mm -hmm. It was not necessarily a new concept, maybe maybe not worded exactly the same, but being born of the Spirit was something that was needed all the way from Adam to current day, all the way till Christ comes again, and that would be the way Amen. for spiritual life, be born again, quote unquote. And Hebrews 11, 6 tells us without faith it is impossible to believe, or to please God. But the carnal, man, carnal mind can't have faith, can it? That's it. Romans 8 tells us that to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is peace. Does the carnal mind, is it enmity with God, and it cannot, so then all that are in the flesh cannot please God? When I think it's also in Romans, maybe chapter 14, I didn't write this down, but it says, all that is not of faith is sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. Faith has been the key from the beginning, and will be the key at the very least till Christ returns. Amen. Yeah. When work, works cannot save, baptism cannot save, the sinner's prayer, prayer, whatever that may be, cannot save. Amen. But well, we must trust in God. We must have faith in Him. Yeah. Really, for salvation, and even for everything that comes after salvation, we must have faith in Him. No. Saving faith is only the beginning of it, isn't it? Amen. Disciples had saving faith, but they often doubted the power of Christ. And then when he did deliver, they were shocked. <laughs> we're no different, really, are we? Amen. So well, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen now. We serve the God who's in control of all things, don't we? Not to have faith like the three Hebrews in Daniel chapter three. I know that God is able to deliver me, but if he doesn't, we're not going to bow down in this golden image. That's it. Amen. It might not be a little golden image that we're called to bow down to. I'm sure there's something that, whether it's compromise or whether it's... Amen. 
false teachings, something may come up against us that we'll have to choose whether to believe God or and go against maybe the popular, the logical way of thinking. We just need to simply believe God. Amen. The righteousness doesn't come by any other way but by faith in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's many, many, many today hoping to work their way in heaven and they'll be disappointed when they stand before God. That's it. Amen. So John really wrote the whole first epistle of John so that we can know that we are saved. We know that we have eternal life. That's it. Amen. You can't know that you have eternal life if you're just hoping to get there on good works. If you're just hoping that you know, you'll be accepted when you stand before him, you'll be sorely disappointed. Amen. And yet there's many today that for some reason believe that false teaching. For some reason they have bought into I can do this and God will accept me. Hmm. I guess it's because that's the way the flesh likes to think of it. That's it. Amen. The flesh likes to work. The flesh likes to think he can do something. But salvation that comes from God, there's no room for man. Amen. It has to be completely of him that he might get all the glory and honor. That's not popular teaching today, but yet it's what the Bible says over and over again. From Abraham all the way to present day, boasting is excluded. It has to be of faith. Amen. Close with that thought. Amen.